give the race to uh, to Sheehan? No, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I really don't. Shaheen um, got all the votes he was ever going to get in 2010. Back when Haley was an unknown, uh, Shaheen, uh, if he went, if he if he was going to win, he would have won that race because he was well financed and he had a well run <coughs> campaign and he came up short. And frankly, since then he hasn't done anything. He, he has no record of accomplishment. He can't point to anything he's done in the Senate. He's a career politician. He wants more. And I'm going to beat them all. You watch. It's a five-way race. There is no runoff. We're going to win this thing. And I'm going to restore trust in state government for you. That's what's going to happen. We're going to win it. I've been, Will and I have been all over South Carolina today, and he can tell you the response has been tremendous. When I, when I say independent, man, the light, those eyes light up, and people say, thank goodness we've got somebody that's going to represent us for a change. Not some special interest crowd or not some out of state donor. We got somebody to fight for us. And I am a fighter. I hope you know that about me. Uh, I'm going to fight for every vote. And I'm a God fearing man. I'll tell you that I'm a born again Christian. I'm really proud of that. And God is guiding me every step of the way. My faith is important to me. My wife and I start every day out with a devotional in the mornings. And I try to carry those words of wisdom with me every day as I carry our message to South Carolina. So pray for our effort. Even if you can't find your, you, you can vote for me. Still pray for me. I want your prayers. I need your prayers. Uh, but in your heart, I hope I've said something tonight that, that uh, resonates with you. Go to our website, check it out. I think you'll find my record of service to South Carolina is unblemished. I have worked hard in, in the state, not only as a circuit judge, but I've worked in nonprofits. I've served my community, my church, and I want to serve you. Give me that chance, please. I will be your governor. We've got time for a few more All questions, right. and Don't I know we've got questions. lots of hands sure, back sure. here. Ruth was next. Um, I think Ruth. It's about the illegal immigrants and the influx of the children that are being dispersed yeah. across the country. How would you handle that? You know, that's a federal issue, uh, but it's tragic. We didn't hear the question. Can yeah, you the question was, what about all these illegal immigrants coming across the Mexican border? What can we do about it? What about the ones coming into the state? Yeah, into the state. We'll talk about that, too. Um, you know, we I wish we had the resources to fix all the world's problems, but we don't. I, I want to take care of our people. Uh, I feel sorry for the children. But, you know, we have problems here at home that we have to fix. We have our own citizens that we need to serve. And those people need to be sent back home. I'm sorry. Uh, they need to be sent back home. It's sad that our Congress is broken. I don't expect them to do anything about it uh, because it's a broken system. Uh, much like it's, it's about to be in Columbia. It's, it's just about as bad in Columbia. But that, that's a... a it's a sad thing to see those poor kids crawl through the mud, but they need to go back home to their country of origin. It's kind of a follow-up about the um, treating of the immigrants and so <coughs> Just a quick sidestep to talk to the other folks here. How would you as a governor handle the situation that is going on in Ferguson, Missouri right now um, with everything that's going on there and the governor coming out with uh, statements that he made and so forth. Well, it's, it's sad anytime people resort to violence. You know, that's why I believe in rule of law. We have to have laws. We form, our Constitution says we're a govern, government of laws. And so I'm all about law enforcement. I represent law enforcement. I fought for law enforcement, of course. And, you know, law enforcement's underpaid, underappreciated. The least we can do is give them the resources to do their job. Now, I, I really hope that peace can come to that community. I hope that it can, and that's what I pray for. Uh, but again, uh, we can't have riding in the streets and looting. I mean, that's just, that's just not, that's, that's not lawful conduct. I believe in somebody's First Amendment rights to express their opinions, the right to be a congressman, the right letters to the editor, to vote. 
That's the way to solve problems, not, not rising in the street and so that's all I would do. Yes, sir. Do you have, uh, does the fact that Eric Holder's on the ground there now, does that en enhance your your optimism, optimism for a fair trial, or does it detract from it? He had nothing. He should go back to Washington. I mean, why, why is he, what's he doing now? This, this, is a local, this is a local issue. I think Eric Holder is the worst attorney general we've had in years. It's horrible. Nobody likes him, but I, I think he should get out of there. It's a local problem. It's a local problem. And uh, the police, the police issue. The community issue, and that, those folks are going to have to resolve. I have four cops. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Bill Singleton. Yes, sir, Bill. I like everything you're saying. Uh, one of the things that I've seen, one problem we have in Columbia is basically one man owns our Supreme Court. <laughs> uh, on the way that judges and Supreme Court justices right. are appointed. What, right. if anything, can you as governor do to correct that? Great question. You know, I, I have been looking at judicial selection, and let's, let's be honest, there's no perfect way to, to select judges, okay? States do it differently. We're only one of two states that do it this way. Virginia and South Carolina are the only ones that let the General Assembly elect their judges. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a perfect way to do it. It's, it's not. I, uh, I'm going to watch it carefully because I share your concerns. But I think what we really need, and this is what I want, is we need a, an independent investigative body to investigate legislative ethics complaints. We can't have the Fox Garden in the house, I'm sorry. And, and, and until we get that, our system is broken. We have got to have an independent investigative body investigating legislative complaints. You know, you cannot expect these House members to sit in judgment of one another and get a fair outcome. This is not going to happen. So that's part of my ethics report. Yes, ma'am. Well, them guys sitting up there in Columbia are the ones that's got to pass the law and change things. Right. Why are they going to do that for themselves? It's not going to happen. They're not going to do it. It's not going to happen. we got to make them do it. And if I'm governor, I'm going to make them do it. They're, they're, they, if, if they don't do it, they're not going to get my cooperation on anything. They've got to be told. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to travel around the state of South Carolina. And we're going to make them do it. We're going to hold public forums. We're going to raise hell until they do it. That's the only way to get our government back. Because right now it's a whitewash. And I'm sorry, you know, uh, if we've got legislators down there that are literally, they're on the tape. We know that. They're on the tape. And it's been going on for a long time. We need to stop. We know that. It needs to stop. It. I understand. How involved? And the governor's position. How involved and how much exertion can you put on our legislators to do the right thing? To, um, They're always wanting something. Yeah. They always want something. They want somebody appointed to this board. They want something, you know, there's something they want. And so I'm going to use those appointment hours to give what you need. And that is what we're talking about. We need an ethics bill that's strong and meaningful. We need a government we can be proud of and trust. You know, nobody trusts our government anymore, and frankly, I don't blame them. I don't blame them a bit. And until we can restore trust and integrity in government, folks, we got nothing. We got nothing. Marcia had a question. She's yes, been Marcia. holding up her hand for right. a while. Yes. Uh, should our state be accepting federal money for education, allowing them to determine our curriculum? Mm -hmm. I'm against Obamacare. Uh, I'm against... Uh, Common Core. We don't need Common Core. Let me tell you, that's that's Obama and the federal government trying to tell us how to run our schools. We have locally elected school boards to do that. Let's let's have our own standards. We don't need to have them imposed on, on us by outsiders. And this is another thing that you may or may not know. Governor Haley's the one that brought Common Core to South Carolina. She signed the memorandum letting it in. And now she, she's backing out, you know, she's backing off, but she knows there's a grassroots effort. Our people don't want it. We don't want it. And so she's flipped her position a lot, a lot like Governor Jim, a little buddy down in Louisiana. He just flipped his position last week. They know that people want local government. 
That's why we have school boards and, and parents. They got totally left out. This thing was snuck through behind closed doors. The parents and teachers, administrators, the local school boards had no idea whatsoever. Now that's, folks, that's not right. One more question, and we're going to take a break. Ron? I got two. Two? <laughs> Go for it, Ron. I don't know exactly how many boards of education are in South Carolina, but I do know that when I was in Ohio, which was years ago, there was over 700 boards of education. And in my mind, I'm saying, why do you need 700 plus boards of education all trying to do the same job? Wouldn't it be more efficient to have a representative from each area and have one board of education? Well, that's what we do in Greenville County. Uh, we have we have one of the largest school districts in the nation. Uh, it's uh, it's working well. Greenville County just had the highest act scores, ACT scores in the state. And this high school up in Riverside had the best scores along with Daniel High School, which is over in Pickens County. And it works well. Schools are well run, but they only have one school board for that entire county. Now, I think we need some consolidation. Yeah, to how your about point. the rest of the state? I don't know. Yeah, to your point, uh, you know, Spartanburg has seven school districts. There you go. Now, why? Why have seven administrators? Seven, seven computer systems. Right. Seven buildings. Duplication. Seven well, they need to be consolidated. The money okay. can be saved. You wouldn't have to ask for money for years. There you go. There has to be a balance between that and it all goes to Washington. You you briefly talked about your business. Yes. What exact type of businesses do you have today? I own the radio stations in Anderson, South Carolina, Anderson County. I own WRX FM 103.1, which is a conservative talk. Uh, we have Laura Ingram. I was pleased to bring Laura Ingram to our county for the first time. Uh, we have a local talk show in the mornings, and then we play. Uh, we, we have high school and college sports programs at night. And, uh, the other, I have a gospel station, country, uh, Christian gospel station uh, on the AM side, and then we have Fox Sports on the other AM station. Are you saying three? I have three stations, yes, sir. I bought them out of bankruptcy, by the way, to save jobs because they were going to go under. and. I didn't want to see that happen. I believe that we need to keep uh, the media alive to report the truth. And you know, these stations had always done that. They told the truth about what was going on in our county council meetings, our local meetings. And I didn't want to see that in. So we kept that tradition alive. And being on that subject, how about your wife? My wife? <laughs> what about my wife? Subject of jobs and ownership. Yeah, she has a, she has a law firm in Greenville that she owns and uh, she, she practices law. She's so uh, I'm very proud of her. She she's a hard worker. She's a uh, uh, she has done so much for the community. Uh, she received the order of the Palmetto for her charitable work in Greenville County. Uh, we have fought together to try to uh, improve those victims of domestic violence. We support uh, two domestic violence shelters in the Upstate with with our uh, funds and our support, and we also are the, the uh, signature sponsor for the Boy Scouts in America and their local troops up in the Blue Ridge Council, so I'm very proud of her community service. Thank, thank you for asking. She's a very important part of my life, and uh, I love to hear Okay, Laura, the last question down there. Uh, yes. Uh, Tom, uh, you're talking about some great ideas, but what concerns me is the fact that when when you get in, uh, those that are already in office, be it as a governor or, or even higher, it seems like they, they will kind of say, all right, you're new here. Sit in the corner and listen how the big boys are doing it. How do you fight that? How do you go against that? As I told you earlier, and that's a good question, but as I told you earlier, I'm a fighter, and I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to take that line down. We have three co-equal branches of government. We have the General Assembly, which I served in. We have the, leg the, the, uh, the Judicial, which I served in, and we have the Executive, which I want to serve in. And 
I, I understand our Constitution. I understand our, uh, the, the, the way that I can use this office to really put it to get the things that we're talking about. And it's not by going out of state and raising millions of dollars from millionaires and billionaires. It's by staying home and working, working day in and day out tirelessly for reform and change. And that's what I'm committed to do. So give me a chance. I won't let you down. Thank you.